Hello everyone and welcome to my beginner's guide to crafting and gathering. I'm gonna walk you through the leveling process from level 1 to 90 and do it the most efficient way possible. Explaining abilities and give you rotations, crafting macros and other tips and tricks to also make gil in the process. I highly recommend that you have completed the main scenario up to patch 3.4. The quest is this one, Litany of Peace, to have completed up to this. It's the last quest of patch 3.3. .3. This way we can unlock the firmament because that's where we're gonna spend the most time leveling and everything else. You can of course still follow the guide even if you haven't reached this far. I'm gonna provide crafting macros for leveling other ways than that as well. For those of you who haven't reached here, so don't worry about that. Okay, the first step is to unlock the crafting classes. Just started the brand new character for this. So here is the job, so, or rather the classes for Disciple of the Hand and Disciple of the Land. We have 8 Crafter classes and 3 Gatherer classes. Once you have completed level 10 of your battle class, you can start unlocking crafters in e each of their guilds. Blacksmith and Armorer are right here in Limsa. These are the two quests for them. Just gonna go through the list. Uh, Carpenter is in uh, Gridania. Goldsmith is in uh, Ulda. Leatherworker in Gridania. Weaver is in Ulda. Alchemist in Ulda. And Culinarian in Limsa as well. As for the Gatherers. Ulda, Miner, Gridania, Botanist, Limsa, Fisher. So you just go to each of the guilds and unlock it. You just talk to the guild receptionist of each class and uh, agree to join their guild and start the class. Join the blacksmith's guild. We'll start with this. I'm gonna give you an example of one crafter class and one gatherer class. So you just repeat the same thing for every other class. This way the guide is, I don't drag on the guide for no reason and don't make it longer for no reason. So I just show you one example of each. So talk again and you get the level one quest. Okay, and then you equip the tool that they give you. Uh, let me talk to the guild master. Equip it. Blacksmith unlocked. Okay, so there are other items that makes you get more experience if you have access to them. I recommend it. It's not required, of course. It just makes it level a little bit faster. I have the friendship circlet, which is gotten from the recruit a friend campaign. Or you can also use the Moogle Cap. Moogle Cap goes up to level 10 with 20% experience boost. This one is uh, up to level 25. So this one is a bit better in that regard. And uh, for the earrings, Alamigan earring, if you pre-ordered Stormblood back in the day. Most likely if you're following this guy, you don't have this. But it's not a big deal. It's like 30% XP boost up, up to level 50. It just speeds up the process a little bit. It's not, it's not game changing or anything. So that's that. If you have access to XP boosting stuff. And now we accept the first quest after we equip the tool. So we get some shards to craft with. You, we get the crafting log. You go to logs, crafting log. And there you can find all the recipes for each crafter class in this window right here. And up to level 15 of each crafter class, you can buy all the materials from NPC really, really cheap. So you just buy materials, quick synthesis. Well, quick synthesis is up to level 10. Uh, we, we don't have that yet, but it's fine. So let's buy a few mater base materials. They're not that expensive, you just buy some. 
Okay, I would just highly recommend buy a little bit of every material available. And then you just go to town. Let's start with our first craft. So, at first we only have one ability, it's basic synthesis. Let's just use that to craft the ingot. Two basic synthesis and done. Wow, that already got us to level 3, okay. Just craft a few. And each time you craft a recipe you haven't crafted before, you will get a lot of experience bonus as for the first time craft. So what I recommend is going through all of the recipes first. So that you get, you know, the XP bonus for first time crafting. And that helps you level up a fairly quicker. Okay, so we just completed the quest. They just wanted the bronze ingot as well. Wow, 1% high quality. Wow. That's a good start for this guide, isn't it? We didn't want high quality, but thank you. So, what high quality is... Basically, you have abilities that increases your progress. Progress is to finish the craft itself. But you also have a quality bar, which you can increase by certain abilities. Level 5 is our first ability that increases quality, which is basic touch. Yeah, it's already there in the hot bar. Okay, so... What you do is hit basic touch and you will see the quality bar increase. And it's 12% now, which means we have 12% chance that after we finish the craft, it becomes high quality. High quality gear basically have more stats. Especially in endgame, no one uses normal quality gear. So it's always high quality. So we have to learn to make high quality gear, which is easy and I'll walk you th through it. So right now... We are at 12%. We have durability as well. Durability is how many abilities you can use basically before it, it goes to zero. If durability goes to zero before you finish the craft, your craft is failed and you lose all the materials. So we want to be able to make sure so we finish the craft before it goes to zero durability. And... Uh, to see how much progress you can gain with each ability or how much quality you can gain with each ability, you click on calculations right here or press triangle if you're on PlayStation. So as you can see here, we have three tabs, pro favorites, progress and quality. You're only interested about progress and quality. You can also add favorites if you want. So as you can see, basic touch increases by six. This way we know we hit it once, this way the next one will finish the craft, so we make sure we don't fail it. And any other spare durability we have, we just use to increase quality. So now I have room for one more basic touch. If you go to quality, basic touch gives us 35 more to the quality bar, that increases it by a lot. So let's hit one more. And durability is down to 10. So we have durability left to finish the craft, basically. And that ended up high quality as well. So high quality materials are used to increase your quality at the start of the craft. So for example, this bronzing got I just high quality. If we use it, as you can see, we start the craft with already quality added to it. Because we are using high quality material. If your gear is on the low side, using high quality materials will help you get to 100% easier. Same thing here, I'm gonna use this as an example. We, we are increasing it by 6 each basic synthesis, so let's hit it 3 times, that will get us to 18. Okay. We have 30 durability left, we have room to do 2 basic touches. Let's do those. And finish that craft. 
84% chance and didn't high quality. It's all RNG. It's all luck. But we had a 1% high quality earlier on the video. Our first ingot. Okay, so the quest wants a bronze ingot. It doesn't have to be high quality, so let's just craft one. So up to level 50, you have a new class quest. Each five levels, you get a new class quest, which rewards you with gear and sh crystals and shards. Oh yeah, that's another thing I need to mention. Each craft, other than the basic materials, they also require shards and crystals later on. You can use your gatherer classes to get these, which we'll get to. Okay, so let's just hand in the quest. We get some shards to start us and some copper ore. We also get a chest piece that increases our stats. All right, so let's explain the stat. Craftsmanship, the more you have, the less basic synthesis you're gonna need to finish the craft. It makes finishing the crafts easier with the synthesis abilities, so the progress bar will become easier if you have more craftsmanship. Control is for the quality bar. So the more control you have, the more basic touch will increase quality for you. You can see in the tool bar in the ability explanation, it says increases quality. Actually, let me make that bigger so you can see. As you can see, basic touch got efficiency 100% and their success rate as well. Skills that don't have 100% success rate have a chance to fail and you just lose your durability. But this is 100% so you don't have to worry about that. Increases quality 100%. So this 100% is your control stat. If it's more, the 100% of the control is gonna be bigger basically. Same thing with craftsmanship. Efficiency, have a hand with craftsmanship basically. And you also, we also have CP, some skills cost CP, we haven't unlocked them yet. For example, Master's Mend cost 88 CP, which restores 30 durability. We're gonna get that at level 7. So you can have more skills for that craft by restoring your durability. Alright, so we are level 5, well we are level 6, we can do the level 5 quest as well, let's do it. I'm gonna mention it again, because this is important. You have to do your class quest, because as, at level 65 we get uh, an ability called Manipulation here. Which for each action you do, you restore 5 points of durability, highly highly important ability. So if not for the other rewards of the class quest, we have to do that for the manipulation. We have to do all quests. But I recommend doing them anyway because they give an insane amount of experience. So I highly, highly recommend you keep up to date with your class quest. Because if you keep leveling up and ignore them they're gonna pile up and it's gonna be uncomfortable to do so many class quests later on so while you work on each class I highly recommend keeping up to date with your class quests on the topic of materials like if you see for example copper ore you see in the description it says shop selling price 9 gil that means there's a vendor in the game vendor NPC in the game that sells it for 9 gil. So don't go on the market board and buy it for more. Like if you see in the market board, copper ingot is, well, sometimes it is cheaper than vendor. So <laughs> you can check and if it's cheaper, obviously buy it on the market board. But just make sure you check both. Check both market board and the vendor before you decide to buy materials because this way you don't get ripped off from the market board or from the vendor, you know? So, just a thing there. So if you see shop selling price, there's and there's a number, that means there's an NPC selling it. Sometimes it says restricted, that means you have to unlock said NPC via other content in the game. But for example, 
this item. It says shopping, shop selling price none. This means you can't buy it from vendor. You have to craft it or get it from other countries. And uh, other than the guild suppliers themselves for early materials, there is the trade craft supplier you can use for materials. They may have different materials than the guild supplier, so be sure to check it out. There are other vendors that provide material that may not be found with the guild supplier or the city merchants. In the housing areas there is material supplier. They have a variety of materials as well that you can buy. If you are in an FC that have vendors as well inside their house, their FC house, or if you have private house you can also put these vendors in there and they also sell materials for the early crafts. So just a few things. But as long as you know that there's a vendor that's selling it, all, all that is is just you google the material and it will tell you all the ven possible vendors. Like for example right now, I really don't want to craft a lot of bronze ingots because they don't give a lot of XP anymore. It's way better to just buy them from the tradecraft supplier. Same with bronze rivets. Tradecraft suppliers are in every city. Limsa, Gridania, Ulda. And I need to do this for the class quest actually. Now the qu class quest doesn't require high quality of this item. But increasing your quality bar even if you don't end up actually getting lucky and high quality it, still worth doing because it increases your experience amount. If you just finish the craft without increasing the quality, it, it doesn't give as much XP. So we will use some basic touches that we can allow, that we are allowed to, like we, can, we have room for two basic touches. Just increase the quality bar a little bit. Just to increase the amount of XP we get. We don't necessarily need the HQ. Just like that. So, just go through all the recipes one by one to get the first time bonus. And keep up to date with your class quest, each 5 levels basically. That's what, I, what I'm gonna do now. By the way, the tools that you HQ, especially crafter and gatherer tools, it's better to try to sell them on the market board. Like, okay, it's not that much, but you know. You can put stuff up on the market board. So if you high quality, there is a good chance it goes for a bit of gill on the market board. So just uh, put it on the market. If, if like a class quest requires you just NQ, not HQ, and you HQ anyway. Just sell, try to sell the HQ if it's going for a lot instead. This one is not going for a lot, so I'm just gonna use this myself. It, it's got more craftsmanship and control. As for retainers, uh, I'm not gonna go through them in this guide. I have a separate beginner's guide for retainers. Which I'll put in the video description, so uh, please check that out, because it's important too to know about retainers as a crafter and gatherer. The level 5 class quest provides us with an offhand tool. And we can choose one of these other pieces to use. We, Since we are using already a headpiece for experience gain, we're not going to take the headpiece, we're just going to take the pants. Those pants gives us a little more control, which helps. Okay, and equip the file as well. And now we have gear sets. Save your crafter classes on a gear set. And you can also add your gear sets to hotbar so you can change crafters easily. Okay, next quest is level 10, so we just continue using these and crafting for the first time to get the bonus XP and level up. I think we'll do this until level 20 basically. 
And now we also have uh, Master's Mend. Let me show you that. We also have Hasty Touch. Let's go through those two new abilities. So, Master's Mend, I already explained kinda. It increases. Well, it restores your durability. Oh, hello, Doodle. <laughs> Thank you, Doodle, for the Glamour Prisms. Alright, let's continue. I'm gonna explain the abilities. So, l first of all, what you do with every craft is get to the point where you are one synthesis away. It's not necessarily always the best thing to do, but early on, at least right now, it's it's good to, not, to do that. So, uh, a every basic synthesis is 15 durability. Sorry, 15... Uh, progress and cost 10 durability so uh, three of these that means 45 we, we will be one synthesis away from completing the craft and we use 30 durability and now we use master's meant to restore those 30 durabilities all right and now we have room to do more quality we have 60 durability back we also have Hasty Touch. Hasty Touch increases your quality just like Basic Touch. The difference is it costs 0 CP, but it's got 40% chance to fail. Success rate is only 60%. So you calculate your CP. Each Basic Touch is 18 CP and we have 92 CP. So we can use basic touch three times, four times, yes, four times. So we use hasty touch once and basic four times and then finish the craft. Actually, I miscalculated. We could have used a basic touch the whole way. It's okay. <laughs> there we go, high quality. So you can really easily high quality already. Let's do this one. Okay, so we go to the point where we are one synthesis away. Restore the 30 durability we just spent by using Master's Mend. And use 5 basic touches. Finish the craft, just like that. You see, since we have worked on quality bar, we gained a lot more experience. And so now we can do the level 10 quest. Okay. Oh, we already had what we need. We, we bought a bronze rivet from the vendor, so we don't even need to craft it. Sweet. Let's take the gloves. Okay, and we can already this early on use food to increase our crafter stats. There is a lot of cheap food on the market board, so just check them out. I highly recommend food. I highly recommend food that gives you the most CP. Like for example, seafood stew. Usually this one is really cheap and it gives you CP. Yeah. Let I recommend buying a few of those. Those are cheap. And uh, Blood Bulla Base, also cheap. I highly recommend that one too. So just check around the market board for food. Um, usually you can find a lot of good food for really cheap. Because people use these for the reason why they are cheap is because people are getting them from content and they end up not using them anyway. These are not the latest best food so they are not used as much for late game. That's why they become cheap. Alright, let's talk about rapid synthesis a little bit. So there is 50% chance that you will fail when using it. But efficiency is 250%. 
so two and a half times more than basic synthesis it increases by a lot the the progress bar by a lot so if you go to calculations yeah it's 37 instead of 15 but the thing is it can fail and right now we'd have no craft that needs rapid synthesis so basically if you want to gamble your progress bar so that it leaves you more room to do more quality then use rapid synthesis otherwise it's not needed even at end game crafts no, no craft is hard enough where you need to gamble with rapid synthesis anymore we used to need it back in the day when crafting was hard but nowadays crafting is so easy rapid synthesis is almost never used so just forget about it Unless we get new expert recipes in Endwalker. As of right now, I'm recording this video. We are in patch 6.05 and so far there is no new expert recipes. But maybe in the future, if we need it, obviously I'll, my guides will include it for expert recipes. But just think about it like this. Unless it's expert re recipe, you don't need rapid synthesis. Just don't even bother with it. At level 10 we also unlock quick synthesis, for example I need a lot of bronze ingots but I don't want to craft them one by one because that's very tedious. So you can just put quick synthesis. For example I want 30 bronze ingots and if you want to use your HQ materials you can also highlight that. And just put synthesis basically. And you just AFK and leave it be. It's a really, really, really useful tool. Just make sure you meet the stat requirements for quicksenting each material. If you see in the bottom part of the window, it says character characteristics. Craftsmanship recommended 22. So make sure you, you have the craftsmanship required. Otherwise, you will fail and lose materials. So just make sure you have the stats before you quicksend. You can use food or upgrade your gear if you don't meet the requirement. Also you have to have at least crafted one copy before you can quicksend. Okay, so at level 13 we will get a new ability called Tricks of the Trade. It requires you to have good or excellent condition to do. Good and excellent condition comes randomly after each step when you are crafting. Good condition increases your quality by 1.5 times higher than normal. So, so for example, basic touch is 100% efficiency. It becomes 150% basically. Adding increases every ability that increases your quality. So the best thing to do is increase increase the quality by a lot by doing the ability that gives you the most quality we don't have it yet just yet and there are other abilities that require you to have good or excellent condition to be able to even use them in the first place so it comes to play later on much more but right now it's just tricks of the trade or just use it to gain more quality We haven't used any CP yet, so there is no point in using tricks of the trade right now. So we're just gonna use it to gain more quality. I'm just gonna basic touch, basically. Okay. This craft needs a lot of progress, so I'm gambling with rapid synth. Probably I shouldn't do that. Okay, so we just spent 18 CP. We get 20 back for this time from tricks of the trade. Let's just use basic, yeah, as I said, don't use rapid, but sometimes I want to goof around and gamble just to finish the craft faster, but usually it fails because of 50%. Okay, let's use Master's Man to restore durability. Do more basic synthesis. I'm quite under-geared and under-leveled for this craft, but for fun I want to try it. Okay, let's use restore more CP. Use another master's mend. Nice. Keep going. Now we are one away from finishing. Now we can just focus on basic touch. 
and there is also observe. Basically, if you want to try to get good, good condition without using any abil other abilities, it only costs 7 CP. By using observe, which costs 7, you have a chance to get tricks of the trade to get good condition or excellent. And this way, you maybe get some CP back. But it's a gamble. Observe is basically a gamble. But there are abilities later on down the line that requires observe before we can even get more effect out of, the, out of them. For example, later on focus touch. After we use observe, focus touch increases its efficiency. So right now I rarely use it. It's very situational, but it might come in handy later. Okay, let's use basic touch. Actually, it's a good example right now. Right now, I don't have basic touch CP requirement. I only have 15 CP. Left. But if I use observe to try to get 20 CP back, I could then use basic touch instead of hasty because hasty have a chance to fail. So let's use observe. We didn't get it. Let's use it one more time. We didn't get it, so it's random. Okay, now we just have to use hasty touch. Oh, it didn't fail anyway. 74%, very nice. Finish the craft. Nice, high quality, bastard sword. Oh, we just unlocked trial synthesis. What trial synthesis is basically... Here, you click on it. Basically, you want to practice the recipe without using any material. This way, if you fail, you don't lose your materials. Very, very, very amazing and useful tool. The only downside about Trial Synthesis is you can't use HQ materials, but that's the only thing about it. So you can fail and practice and not have to worry about materials. Really good tool there. We also got a new ability, which is called Veneration. It increases your synthesis abilities efficiency by 50%. So for four steps. So for four steps, basic synthesis will become 150% instead of 100. So it can come really handy for those crafts that require a lot of progress. And now we do the level 15 quest. Oh, there is our first excellent condition. Look how nice and colorful. It increases your quality by four times. So let's use basic touch. And <laughs> that will probably get us to 100% here. Boom. Okay, so at this point for now, just rinse and repeat for all the other crafter classes. Unlock them and get them to level 20. I'm just gonna get them to level 20 and then we will continue from there when it comes to crafting. Now next we go and unlock a gatherer class so I can show you an example of that too. The miner's guild in Ulda, same way as we unlock crafter, we unlock miner. Talk to the guild receptionist. Say yes, I always accidentally say no by tech skipping. <laughs> okay. Get our pickaxe. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Same thing here, equip the Alamigan earring for more XP and the headpiece. Oh, we already have the copper ore we got from the blacksmith's guild. That's needed for the first quest. Okay, just like crafting, gatherers also have their own abilities, actions and traits, actions. To be able to see the gatherer nodes, we need to pop this ability called prospect. We need to turn it on, so put that on. And you will see the nodes here. You see it on the map. Well, you can't see it on the big map, you can see it on the mini map. You see those pickaxe icons, that's where you can gather. And there is also a gathering log which tells you where to mine what. For example, we want to mine copper ore. And it tells you those two possible spots. 
you click on it or press X on PlayStation's case, it will tell you exactly where it is on the map, right there. And the one in Central Santa line is here. But you have to pop the prospect to be able to see it. Don't worry about prospect though, later on it becomes automatic as you level up. So we open the node and you s you can see we have 95% chance to gather it. Muddy water. And the 0% below that is the boon chance. What boon is when you hit the boon, it increases the amount of each gathered materials you get. So if we hit the boon, which we can't right now, is 0%, but it you, we will get two muddy waters instead of one if we hit the boon, basically. We didn't get it. Wow, 95%, 5% chance to fail and we failed. Okay, nice. So what that chance depends on is your gatherer stats. Gatherers have three stats, gathering perception and GP. GP just like CP for crafters, it's for the actions, certain actions require, require certain amount of GP cost. And perception is your boon chance, since it's zero, we don't have any yet. The more perception you have, the more chance you have to hit the boon to get more quantity. We will get more as we level up and get more gear. For now, don't worry about it. For now, just worry about hitting it for once. There we go, we got it. Just like crafting for the first time, gathering it, you will get a huge XP bonus. So, just like crafting, I recommend you to go through your gatherer log and gather everything at least once. There is also an achievement tied to that later on, which gives you a very nice tool, very nice sparkly, shiny pickaxe later on. If you are into glamour, I think, Everyone is into glamour. I have it on my main character. Maybe I won't do it on this because I'm only making this character to make this guide. But I have done it on my main character where I, where I gathered at least one of everything. Just so I can get that nice shiny tool. But yeah. Gather everything once at least. So you can get the huge nice XP bonus. Not only is useful for extra XP and the achievement tool later on, it's also good for retainers. If you haven't gathered something at least once before, your retainers cannot gather it for you. So be, be sure to gather everything. Just open your gatherer log, go to each thing you haven't have gathered yet. If you have gathered it yet, you will get that check mark and just like crafter make sure you keep up with your quests zinc or solid femur have only 44 and 49 percent chance to be gathered but we just leveled up to five and got this sharp vision 2 ability which increases the chance by 15 percent costs 100 gp for those we use it Helps a little bit. There is also traits, auto prospect. Now we don't need to pop it anymore at level two. Basically, you don't have to worry about it for long. You just, it just gets on automatically from now on. And sneak is at level eight. Make sure you always have it on because if enemies aggro you, you may die and get interrupted, or interrupted at best. You don't want to have that. Yeah, there is this thing also called Enable Quick Gathering. Highlight it, and this way you don't have to keep clicking. Okay, just finished the level 10 class quest, and we got offhand. Just like Crafter, we have offhands. And uh, if you don't have offhand, you can do the quarrying notes. The, the quarrying notes are marked as blue on the map. And if you go to the gathering log, you can see the both types. This is normal mining and this is quarrying notes. 
so be sure to check both logs out every time when you are looking for something all right time to unlock fishing fishing is a bit special it doesn't work like botanist and miner even the leveling process is much different there is a content for fishing called ocean fishing basically just like you would queue up for a dungeon when battling you queue up for ocean fishing trips it spawns every even number hours GMT time zone uh, right now it's 6 p.m. GMT and you have 15 minutes to register for it after those 15 minutes you can't register anymore until the next trip okay let's equip this the good thing about ocean fishing as well not only is the best way to level up fishing and to level 81 it is also good in the way that you don't need to worry about gear for your fisher you just go in have fun and you're done oh yeah that's the class quest okay okay so we need to actually at least do the level one quest let's just do that just equip the the bait lugworm you get it from the quest we just unlocked fishing and you just cast your line and wait for it you can also make your tip of the fishing rod green so you can see when it starts moving and then you do the hook ability when a fish bites but it's really simple hooking becomes a bit more different later on when we get the ability patience but i'll go over that later so we just need five of that fish for the quest It's okay, we have 15 minutes to finish this first quest uh, and then register for the ocean fishing trip. You can also sit while fishing, if you prefer. That's one, four to go. Okay, quest is done, let's hand it in and unlock ocean fishing. Once you, once you hand that in for the level 1 quest, you get this quest from this Rogadin right there. And you go to the Arcanist Guild. And now we can complete this quest and register for ocean fishing. Now there is a website for ocean fishing that tells you for each trip what's the best bait to use. There is this thing called Spectral. Spectral fish are really rare, but if you catch it you will get a buff where you, after you cast your line, fish comes really quickly and it increases your XP that you gain a lot because of that. You catch way more in less time. So just make sure you buy a bit of each bait here. Because the ocean fishing uses these three, depending on the trip. This website, I'll link in the video description, will tell you which bait to use. Okay, it will pop either when... Uh, you reach the cap play of players which is 24 or 15 minutes pass by oh we only got seven people the more people you have the higher chance you get spectral to spawn but nothing you can do about it when not enough people queue up for it also i was late if you register as soon as the clock reaches the time because i registered like 10 minutes after 10 past the time so if you want more people just register earlier is the best way but for now I just want to show you how exactly it works so this website I'm gonna link in the video, in the video description tells you what to use for each part uh, the first part the best bait to use is pl plump worm so let's use that also, let's use the food, any any food, it doesn't need to be gathering, you just want a 3% XP boost I think. Well, GP food is nice, you get more GP as well. 
Just find the cheap GP food on the market where there are tons of, and plenty of them. So you just fish and hope for a spectral. Look at that amount of XP. Just look at the XP bar, how insane it is. Look at that. It's just gonna be level after level. Really, it's really fast. Ooh, a big catch. Oh, I got a spectral. Nice, so this spectral will give you a chance to spawn the spectral effect. Well, I wasn't lucky this time around, it didn't spawn it. But yeah, every time you have a chance. Two spectrals in a row and it didn't spawn it. Damn it, not lucky. Yes, we got the effect. Someone else caught a spectral and it spawned the effect. You see how the sky changes and everything. And the music as well. But I'm still in my previous catch. Come on, hurry up. There we go. So what this effect does, it makes big fishes appear and easy to catch them. And it's really fast to catch them. Look, as soon as I cast my line, something catch, something bites, just like that. And because of that, we get boosted XP. I mean, the more catches, the more XP. Oh, that gave a lot of XP, damn. You can basically just repeat ocean fishing until level 81. And then from there on, there is a better way to level, and I'll show that. But don't forget your class quests. Just make sure you keep up with them too. Because some traits come from class quests later on. And we need those traits. So I'm just gonna do ocean fishing until 81. I will however show you some tricks when we get other abilities to make the leveling process faster. Like once we get patience ability, I will show that. But after that it's just rinse and repeat until 81, nothing changes really for fishing. Uh, 30 seconds remain, you have to stop fishing, the game forces you to stop. What you can do is just sell off the junk so you free up inventory slot. These fish serve no purpose. You can also decent them. We are we are gonna unlock decent later when we get crafters to 30. So refer to that part in the timestamps. I really like ocean fishing, it's really chill and chill content. And it levels your fishing super fast. Oh yeah, each phase may have a different bait, that is the best bait for that. This one is Krill, so let's change bait. Yeah, just use the website I linked for that, it will tell you for each phase. For example, right here, uh, it tells you that Krill is the best for the Spectral. But once the Spectral spawns, you change to Plump Worm. And Plump Worm have a chance to get you Little Leviathan. And that gives huge amount of score and uh, it will help you get to the 10k points to get the mount easier. 10k score will get, get you the shark mount. So changing the bait during the spectral effect will make sure you get the special fish and that gives a lot of points. Well, it doesn't make sure, it's still rare, it's still RNG. You, you need to get lucky but it... Oh yeah, make, sh make sure you use chum. To make fish bite faster. We're gonna use Trump until we get patience. After that we just use patience. 
Uh, patience makes it so you get HQ, high quality fish. Well, not high quality. Uh, larger fish, basically. Which gives more experience. So, it will make you level faster, basically. But for now, we don't have patience yet. We're low level. We just have to use chum instead to make things faster. Oh, we got patience. Nice. Let's use it. Okay. Let's add them to the hot bar. Oh, spectral spawn. Okay, perfect. So what you do is use pop patience. And then cast your line. If it's one exclamation, you use precision hook set. If it's two, you use powerful hook set. Or if it's two or three, when the fish bites. It's really simple. And that makes us large catch fish. Uh, catch large fish. <laughs> But the thing is, it requires a lot of GP, so... Only use patience when uh, you are full GP, almost full GP. This was one, so we use precision. Things happen so fast, I forgot to change to the other bait. Okay, patience effect wore off, so let's change bait to krill. Also, if you have cordials, cordials are basically potions that restore your GP. You can pop patience and then pop a cordial to get GP back, which helps a lot. I'm gonna get cordials later on. Okay, I have 330 GP, now I think it's a good time to pop patience again. So random things can happen like dolphins joining the ship that increases your fish or whatever. What does this one do? GP regeneration rate is increased. Those dolphins are nice. Large fish, nice. Every time you catch a large fish, you get a stack of this angler's art. And when it gets to three stacks, you can use Thaliac's favor, which restores 150 GP. Really good ability right there. So yeah, just rinse and repeat this until level 81, basically. But just make sure you do your class quests. For finding other fish, like the ones for the class quest, if you don't want to buy them, usually they are cheap, you can just buy them on the market board. But if you want to catch them yourself, this app is really good. It's called the FF14 Fish Tracker app, link in the video description. For example, one of the quests need full moon sardine. What you do is control and F for the search. Uh, control and F and type full moon. Full moon sardine, there it is. And click on it, it, it tells you exactly where you get it. Where to fish for it and what, what bait to use as well. So, I don't need to mention anything else about that. Click on full moon sardine, it takes you to the team craft page. Right here, full moon sardine, it tells you to use spoon worm, it's the best bait for that. And it tells you where to fish for it. You see that fishing icon on the map right there where my mouse is. It tells you exactly X and Y coordination. This works for any fish in the game. You can use this tool for any fish in the game. So this way I don't have to m make a video of every class quest and tell you where each fish is. You can just do it this way. Also make sure in the fish tracker app you go to the settings, advanced settings and 
if this is ticked on, hide always available. This makes sh sure that if you're looking for fish that are only spawning under certain weather conditions, only those will be shown. Just make sure you don't tick it. If it's already ticked, just remove the tick. This way you can see every fish. You just control and F for it. Once you get to level 20 crafter class quest, it leads you to central Thanaline to unlock abilities related to materia. Materia is basically item that you can add to gear, whether it be battle crafter or gatherer gear to increase their stats. There is this thing called spirit bond. On each of your gear, once it reaches 100%, you can use materia extraction ability, which is what we are unlocking right now from this quest. So you can use the materia extraction for gear that have reached 100% spirit bond. Uh, let's add it to our hotbar as well. It's under actions and traits, general, materia extraction. Just add it to your hotbar and you can see all your gear that already reached 100% spirit bond. And you can just extract materia from it. This is the way you farm materia basically. And to gain spirit bond depends on what content you are doing and what gear you are using. If you are using battle gear and doing dungeons, you will gain spirit bond at the end of each dungeon. But the rule is you must not be over geared for the dungeon. Same thing for crafting and gathering, you need to be not under geared to gain spirit bond. If the crafting recipe is way below your gear, you can't gain spirit bond. It's a way for the game to make Materia not be cheesy to farm like you have to do relevant content to spirit bond So for example, if you are doing a level 20 recipe at level 50 you can't gain spirit bond you have to do a level 50 recipe So now I'm just creating materia. I just got the materia extraction and there's another quest here to meld materia to your gear So basically the materia you create you can add it to gear. Each gear piece depending on the level have materia slots. Each gear piece have either two or one materia slots. You can add materia to it with 100% success rate. But you can also overmelt. Overmelding past the guaranteed slots will be RNG based. You have a chance to lose your materia. You can overmelt up to three materias per gear, which means five materia on each gear max. Also, if you have melted materia on your gear, the spirit bonding also becomes faster. So even if you don't want the stats, meld anyway, just so you spirit bond faster and create more materia in the process. Okay, now we unlocked M materia melding. Let's add that to the hotbar as well. Oh, that was transmission, okay. This is the quest for materia melding. Let's do that as well. After doing this one, by the way, if I forgot to show the map, here is all the quests. Materia melding now available. Now the level 20 weaver quest require us to le to meld one materia on the cotton acton. Let's do that. We have the cotton acton ready. Just melt any materia on it. If you change your mind, you can also retrieve materia. Just retrieve the materia if you want to melt something else. But later grades of materia will be not guaranteed that you get it back. But this is grade 1 materia, so we are guaranteed to get it back. And there is another quest for over melding. Basically, pass the guaranteed slots. If you don't do this quest, you can't melt past the guaranteed slots. Also, each piece of gear have their level requirement to be able to meld it. 
There is also NPCs that melt for you if you don't have the level to melt it yourself. But NPCs cannot over melt. They can only do guaranteed melts. For that, crafters have to do it. Okay, so they require us to melt eight materia. What you can do is melt something, then retrieve it and melt it again eight times. If you don't have eight materia or you don't want to waste your materia, we can just do that. Okay, so now retrieve it. And then meld it again. Do it eight times to complete the quest. So if it's grayed out, it means you are under leveled. You cannot meld it yet until you reach that level. As you can see on the gear, it says Materia Melding, Disciples of the Hand, level 70. It used to be also class based, but now it's just any crafter. If you have any crafter at level 70, you can meld this. Oh, for over melding, we need to be level 25. So once we reach level 25, we just come back here and complete the quest and get advanced materia melding. So we can't do over melts until level 25. We can only do the guaranteed slots. And yeah, crafter gear basically gives crafter materia, gatherer gives gatherer materia and so on. And again, keep in mind, you need to not be under geared or over geared for that node or recipe you are doing also if you take a look at the inventory grid bottom right corner of my screen i just made it bigger so you can see it easier you see those green dots on the left side of it those are your gear if anything is 100 percent spirit bonded it will be white instead of green let me see if i have anything else 100 percent. this one you see my gloves went green there and then if i change back to something that is not 100 percent spirit bonded you see it went back to green so you can see from your inventory grid if anything's ready to do mat materia extraction if you see any white i recommend just press the materia extraction button and just create the materia from it because when it comes to crafting even low level materia can be useful like, you can just add some extra CP to your gear, it might come in handy later. Stuff like that. You can, or you can just sell it too. To make gear. Materia melding and extracting only becomes super important at end game, so you don't really need to worry about any of this. For now, it's just melding one materia to the gear that is required for the level 20 crafter quests. That's all you need to think about and do for now. For end game, I have guides for spirit bonding, the best way to do it, the best way to farm gatherer and crafter material later on. So I already have guides for those for end game. All right, so class quests actually give us enough left side gear and the tools, but for accessories, we need to craft it ourselves. So let's craft two rings, brass rings of crafting, 9 CP each, and if we high quality, it's gonna be 10 CP each. So I highly recommend it. So I'm gonna do one, and I'll also go through a couple new abilities with you. Waste Knot. Basically, when you have Waste Knot, you're gonna only spend half of your durability for each action for four steps. So instead of 10, we use five durability. That makes sure you use more skills before your durability runs out. So we start the craft with a waste knot. First off, let's get to one basic synthesis away from finishing it. It's gonna be 66. Okay, and then basic touch. We also have standard touch now. So standard touch is, it's just basic touch, but with more efficiency. It increases your quality more than basic touch. And it costs more CP too, 32 CP. However, after you use basic touch, there is combo. If you use standard touch after basic touch, you see that the skill is highlighted in my hotbar. That's the combo action, just like some battle jobs that have the same. Just press that and it will cost 18 CP instead of 
is instead of the 32 so this way we have to spend less CP for more high quality let's do that again basic touch and then standard touch um, we only have 20 durability left so we don't do the basic touch we just do the more expensive standard touch and then finish the craft 90% not too bad all right we are level 20 weaver it is time to unlock the firmament so come to Ishgard to foundation and there will be this notice to unlock the content there is few other content that we will do along the firmament where it helps us level up really really quickly so I'm gonna go through all of these with you now starting with the firmament As I mentioned in the beginning of the guide, you need to have completed the main scenario quest, Litany of Peace, which is the last quest of the 3.3 patch. Otherwise, you can't unlock this. So as soon as we are in the firmament, what we do yeah, is, uh, for the notices to appear, we have to actually complete the quest, which we need to be a battle job. I thought you needed to be a crafter job, but... You also need to be level 60, at least on a, any battle job. Alright, so we completed that towards the firmament quest. And now we can see the notices appear on, on the NPCs. So get through all of them. A, if you don't want to, you don't need to read it. I'm gonna explain everything to you about the firmament. So first, let's start with getting rid of all of the notices, exclamation marks. You can take the time to read it too if you want to see for yourself, but I'm also gonna explain it. Unlock the diadem, that's where we're gonna gather for the materials and also level up gatherers there. Okay, so once all of the notices disappear, you talk to everyone and get all the content. We can see from the collectible appraiser. Talk to the collectible appraiser, yeah? We got the recipes now. So here is the recipes. You go to the other category. Special recipe. And then Ishgar Restoration. And you can see all the recipes there. So what we need is the restoration tab 4. For Ignore all the other 3. It's the tab 4 we need. Now... Here is the level 20 hand in. We basically do this until level 40. And to get these materials, you can either buy them from the market board. Well, the straw is from an NPC, as you can see, shop selling price 9 gil. So most of the vendors sell it, even the weaver vendor. The approved grade for sky builders hemp. This need we need to gather the uh, ourselves or we need to buy it from the market board. But I'm going to show you first. All right. Come here, mission commander. Travel to the diadem. Alright, so the diadem is mainly for gathering and you have this bar compressed aether Once you get one bar you can use this ability called aethomatic auger if you're on ps 4 or ps 5 you hold l2 and then press r3 to execute it once you have a full bar Okay, so now we gonna find the notes here is a node, I'm level 16 botanist. 
As you can see, we have 0% on the other ones. The, those are higher level, so we can't gather them yet, obviously. We're only level 15. So we just go for the... Log. As you gather, you see that your compressed aether bar fill. And once a full bar is on, then I will show you what to do. Well, you just use the auger, L2 and R3. Here it is, the Great Four Sky Builders hemp. That's is, this is what we need for Weaver. For the level 20 recipe. And to find the next node, you just do the Arbor Call ability, and it will tell you where to go. Just fly there. Oh yeah, of course. Don't forget food. Pepper Pot Popotos is a good option. It's cheap on the market board. Or you can keep using stuffed Kishi shawl. It's also good. See that experience I'm gaining? It's really nice. It's so quick to level. Besides, you need the materials for the crafts. So you're killing two birds with one stone. You're getting the materials for your crafts. And in the same process, you're leveling up your gatherers. It's really simple. I highly recommend you use Pioneer's Gift ability, which increases your boon chance by 10%. So let's pop it, and then gather the hemp. You see that? That was a boon, we got two instead of one. So much XP, so much XP. Alright, here is an enemy, and we have a full bar now. So, time to blast them, baby! Oh yeah, look at all the materials we get when doing that. It's so satisfying, I love it. So just keep gathering the level 10 materials with both Miner and Botanist. I would say spend a good half hour doing it for Botanist and half hour for Miner. And you should have plenty of materials to work with. One thing you can do to minimize the amount of flying you need to do is, for example, after you finish a botanist node, just change to miner and see if there is any miner node that respawned nearby. So now, then you change to miner and there might be a miner node nearby. This way you don't have to fly all the way to the next island just to find a node, you know. Now minor node didn't respawn, but there is more botanist nodes. Just finish all botanist nodes and look for the miner on the same island. It also depends on which type of material you need because, for example, this cotton might not spawn on another island as well. So just do trial and error for yourself, find the best route that way. As for gear, we're still using the gear we got from class quests. We don't need to craft gear until level 30. So once we get to level 30, I will show you what to craft. Also, depending on which enemy you blast, you get different materials. For example, right now for the weaver, I want grade 4 hemp. For the To get hemp, this is one of the enemies. See that? For example, if I wanted uh, logs, like tree stuff, you would go for the tree type enemy, this type, the weirwood, and so on. So just blast each enemy and see what they drop and keep a note of it so that you know who to blast for what material later on. Once you feel like you gathered enough for now, just leave. Abandoned duty, but before we are able to use the materials we just gathered in a in the recipe, they have to be approved. 
As you can see, it's approved great, great for Sky Builders hemp. And we only have great four, it's not approved. To approve them, you come to this NPC right here. Float Passant Resource Inspector. And you auto submit all the materials you gathered. And request inspection. And you get the approved version. Do that again for the remainder. Because it's five materials at a time. And you're done. You also get Sky Builder scripts when doing this. You can spend Sky Builder scripts on various rewards from the script exchange vendor here. We will get scripts from doing the crafts later on as well. So I may as well show now. So just browse everything yourself. There is mounts, hairstyles, minions, orchestrion rolls, cosmetic mat items like the parasols, cards. You can also get crafter gear. Well, this is glamour gear basically for crafting. Yeah, these are also glamour. I highly recommend these glams. This one is from Heaven's Word. I'm using it on, the, on my main character. It's my favorite one personally. You can get housing items. You can also get materials for crafts. And materia to meld your gear later on. And dice. You can even sell the dice to make gill. This is a very, very good way to make gill, by the way. I highly recommend it. While you are working to level up your crafts, you can spend your Sky Builder scripts on these dice. Generally, gunmetal black die, pearl white, sell for a lot. So I highly recommend these two. You can sell the other ones too. They, they generally sell well. Check your market board. To see which one is the best to sell at the time. You can check pearl white dye on the market board and look at the sale history. Alright, it's time to level up very very quickly. So, let's start with the gear. Here's the gear. I have the level 20 in Q main hand. Which I got from the level 20 quest, class quest for Weaver. Every other crafting class gives these gear that I'm gonna go through from class quests. Headpiece is also lev uh, level 20 class quest. So I recommend doing your level 20 class quests first. This one is actually from level 15 class quest, the chess piece. Gloves, level 20 class quest. Pants, level 20 class quest. Boots, level 15 class quest, I think. Either way, it's from class quest now the alamigan airing gives me more experience per craft but I need the CP from the fang airings basically so I'd rather have the CP and craft these with higher collectability than then you know getting some more XP. Besides, some of you don't even have the Al Alamigan earring, so why bother? And the offhand from level 15 class quest as well. So most of the gear are from the class quest, except for the accessories which we crafted ourselves and I showed you. So that's the gear. And with this gear we have 260 CP. We need further 24 CP. For this rotation and macro I'm gonna show you now. So there is a lot of options. Bula base was a very uh, cheap food on the market board that gives 34 CP. We only need 24. So it's overkill even. However, I do recommend either seafood stew, matcha or blood bula base HQ which are cheap on the market board. They are less than 100 gil on the market board. So... Don't worry about it. As long as you have 284 CP after food, you don't have to worry about it. However, you just... get benefits from the extra control and gaining more collectability. 
For the sake of the guide, I'm gonna show show it with Bula base. I'm not gonna get the extra control from the other food. Just the CP that I need. I have 286 CP, I just need 284, so we have 2 CP spare even. Okay, let's craft. Here's the macro. What macros are basically you type each line, each line is one action and you type which actions you want to happen in succession. The weight at the end of each line, it says weight 0.2, that means wait 2 seconds between that action and the next one. We need to add that, otherwise it won't work. So here's the finished macro I already made for you for this recipe. You just click execute or just add it to your hotbar, both are as good. Now it's gonna do waste knot and then basic touch, now standard touch. Basic touch, standard touch again. And then it's gonna refresh waste knot. Every action in order. Then basic touch, standard touch, great strides, and standard touch. Look at the quality bar go up. And then finish the craft. Yeah, I do recommend you to get to level 21, otherwise you can't do this macro. The reason is great strides. Great strides is very important ability. It increases the efficiency of your next touch action by 100%. It basically doubles. Use great strides before your last powerful touch ability. That's why I highly, highly recommend level 21. It's not a big deal. Once you get to level 20, you just do your class quest and you're level 21, it's that easy anyway. For example, goldsmith, as, lo as long as you are at least level 20, it will show the recipe. Grade 4, sky builders ingot. And I already show you, showed you where to get the material from the diadem. And the second material is just vendor material. You just get it for every class. And just follow this macro, link in the video description. I have a page for my macros, which I'm also gonna show just after this. Alright, here is my web page. Click on Endwalker Macros, link in the video description. Or click the drop down. Beginner's Guide Level 1 to 90 Macros. Level 20, 60 Durability, 70 dif 74 Difficulty, Grade 4 Ishgar Restoration. That's the macro I just showed you. Here is all the information you need for this macro I just showed you in the video. It's level 20. The, what the level that it says here is for the recipe level. It's not saying that we need to be level 20. It's, uh, it's just the recipe info basically. Level 21. Here is what the minimum level that we need to be. And here is the stats. Craftsmanship 115. Control 121. CP 284 the CP is after food basically we need to be at least this much CP after food and here is the link that shows the gear that I have on for this macro which I also showed in the video earlier here it is all the gear brass needle recruit spinning wheel and so on and so on for other crafting classes obviously it's not gonna be brass needle it's gonna be the item level 20 normal quality main tool that you get from the level 20 class quest. Same thing with the offhand, it's from the level 15 class quest. So this is gonna be the pattern for all my macros. I'm gonna add them to this page. I'm also gonna show them in the video as I showed you. And if you are on PC, you can just basically copy paste the macro to your game and just use it. Simple as that. And here is other info as well, like I add a note and a reminder. This is for leveling up from 21 to 41. We need to be 21 at least for great strides. Because you get great strides ability at 21. 
and then reminder any food works as long as it gets you from 260 CP to 284 CP we are at 260 before using food so you have a lot of options for food to get to this CP and some options will even increase your control from 121 and upwards which helps with getting more collectability the more collectability you have collectability is basically how much did you fill your quality bar and the more you did the more xp you get by handing in the collectible so there you go okay here we go so i made 21 of these let's hand them in look at this look look at my xp bar <laughs> that was one whole level It's one per level, wow, what the hell? Oh my god. Let me just make this a bit bigger, okay. Uh. You see these Koopo stamps we are getting, by the way, in the bottom right corner? When you get five of them, you can redeem it for... Uh, it's like a lottery, you get items and other rewards. We're, uh, we're gonna do that after. Let's hand them in first. Oh my god. So much XP, you can just do this for every class by the way. I mean, I knew Ishgar Restoration was really good and fast for leveling up, but not this fast. Holy moly. What the? Oh my god, just by handing in 21 of them, I went from level, what, 22 to 38? That's insane. So basically, you just rinse and repeat this for every class. Okay. Koopa of Fortune, so for each hand in you get a stamp, after 5 stamps you can do one of these, I have 4 at the moment. Basically you just gamble, you just pick one spot to reveal it, and if you get lucky you get the prize that you want. Obviously the good prizes have less chance that you get it. Oh nice, I got Carbuncle House Slippers, that's good. So this is a good way to get other rewards too. Extra stuffed Carbuncle. That's housing item. You can even get crafter material, minion, minion and casual attire. That's for glamour. Or you can get trash like I just got. The prism. One last, let's do it. Oh, I got some water cordial. That's actually helpful. Cordial is I think I mentioned it earlier. It's it's gonna be good when we ocean fish as well. It restores GP. Or when we botany and mining. Restores your GP. Here is a random good tip that I have for you controller players. So for example, I want to copy the first hot bar of my weaver to my goldsmith. My goldsmith. Because I want every crafter class to have the same type of hot bar setup for the abilities. What you do is... Type in the chat, slash cross hotbar, and then copy Weaver1. I want to copy Weaver1 to my Goldsmith1. Just type that. Type that and uh, enter that and watch my hotbar. Oh, I forgot a space between the Goldsmith and the one. There you go. 
Another amazing way to level up is the Grand Company daily supply and provision missions. So every day you can supply one item or material. Provision is the gatherer ones, supply is the crafter ones. And they give insane amount of experience. Especially the ones that are marked as a, as a star and is orange. You get double reward for those. And if you hand in high quality for crafters, for the crafter ones, then you gain double that as well. So that's double the double when it's star. So watch Goldsmith go from level 21 to 23, almost 24. And you also get Grand Company seals, which is important for ranking up and sending your retainers to ventures. Again, more on that on my retainer's guide. Also, people are lazy to craft these. Most of the time, especially later levels, when it's higher level, they sell for a lot of gil. So it's a very, very good way to make gil as well. So I highly recommend you make one extra copy to sell as well when you do your daily supply and provision missions. For the gatherer ones, for example, you gather 10 extra just so you can sell it. Especially those of you who don't have reached 3.4, past 3.4 main scenario and can't do firmament yet. Especially, even more important for those of you to do your grand company dailies. So don't sleep on them. So many levels. <laughs> For those of you who don't have access to the firmament, maybe you have access to Exile Beast Tribe. It's a crafting beast tribe, daily quests that give you a ton of XP as well. And you can unlock it after you reach level 44 main scenario quest. As soon as you see a level 44 or let's say a four, level 45. I can safely 100% say it's a level 45, yeah. Main scenario quest, once you reach to that point. I don't want to mention anything because of spoilers, but once you reach there, you can come here in Gridania, Grand Company, and talk to Scarlet to unlock Exile Beast Tribe quests. To do Exile Beast Tribe recipes, you have to have this glove equipped all the time. Otherwise, you can't do the recipes. Just make sure you have it on. Quests done for the day for Exile Beast Tribe. Now, as you rank up, you have access to more daily quests, up to 12 per day. But obviously, after level 50, you, you can unlock other crafting beast tribes. 50 to 60 is Moogles. And then 60 to 70, it's Namazu. And then 70 to 80 is dwarfs. So you have to leave some of the allowances for those later on. Well, once you are level 50, you don't need to do exile anymore at all anyway. And then from 80 to 90, we don't have a beast tribe yet as, as of right now. I'm recording this video. But... If you're following this guide from the future, if it's patch 6.3, there will be a new crafting beast tribe. Each point three patch, there will be a new crafting beast tribe. Once you get any crafter to level 30, you can unlock desynthesis. What desynthesis is basically, you can t take apart equipment and some items to get the materials back. So it's a good way to get part of your materials back. This is especially good when you get trash housing items from your 
Retainer Ventures. It's really good for that. Okay, we unlocked it. So, if you go to classes and jobs, there will be a bar below your levels. Like, there's a thinner bar below. That's your desynthesis skill. And if you press confirm, it will show your level of desynth. The higher level you are, the better items you get out of it. Most likely, it affects how many clear demi materials you get. Clear demi materials are items that you can just sell at the vendor for extra gil. Especially clear demi materia 3 can be sold for 5000 gil. It's a way to get a de decent amount of gil from stuff that you don't need anymore. So think of decent as a better recycle bin. So that you get something out of something, basically. And don't go out of your way to level the skills of them. Because what you get out of leveling decent at this point when I'm recording this guide is negligible. You will level up naturally by using de decent over time in the long run. You will eventually max them out anyway. But just don't go out of your way to level them, it's not worth it. As soon as it's worth it, trust me, I'll make a separate guide for, for it, a full-fledged guide for it. Everything being decentable is related to what class the item relates to. For example, this housing item is Carpenter. So I need to have Carpenter level 30, at least to be able to decent. You see it's grayed out. But since my Weaver is already 30 plus, I can decent everything that is related to Weaver. Very, very, very important warning here. Do not decent gear that you get from dungeons. Because it's better that you hand those to the Grand Company through expert delivery. More on that is in my retainer's guide, so, so refer to that. It's always better to get Grand Company seals instead of decenting it. If you don't have access to the firmament, then Tradecraft leaves are also a very good way to level up very fast. Especially those ones with the triple handings. So, if you want to spend at the least amount of allowances, leave allowances, and get the most XP out of them, then do the triple handings I will link in the video description all possible leaf quests so you can look at them yourself and find the best one to do you can have retainers bring you back the materials for them as well this way you don't spend a lot of gil on materials this, this is a triple handing as you can see this is just an example it's only level 20, but it gives me so much XP, even when I'm level 31. So you can just go to each city state. When you are below level 50, the tradecraft leaves depend on the city states. For example, in Ulda, there is only goldsmith, weaver, and alchemist leaves for tradecraft. Because the guilds of those classes are here in Ulda. That's gonna change later, uh, after level 50. All, all leaves will be at the same NPC. But until level 50 plus, just keep that in mind. So just go through the leaves and see which one you found the easiest to do. You can even use the level 20 macro I shared for... For the Ishgar restoration I posted. And you see that card? On the upper right corner of the leave window you see it's a different card for a different leaf this is a way to determine which type of leaf you are doing as you can see this is the triple hand in we did uh, no sorry let me go to the goldsmith which one was the triple hand in this one was the triple hand in that's the card of it and if we go to a level 30 leave with the same card, 
that means that is the triple handed. Once you get any crafter or gatherer class to level 51, it's time to unlock, or level 50 I guess, it's time to unlock the Rowena House of Splendors. This way we can gain scripts. There are two types of scripts and you can get various rewards from them. You know, just like there are two types of tombstones for battle jobs. It's the same thing for crafting and gathering. Crafting also have two types of currency. That is the crafter white and purple scripts. Gatherer also have gatherer white and purple scripts. In our case, it was uh, ocean fishing. That made us level fish really fast. I'm already level 52 fisher. While my crafters are still around the 30s. So I want to unlock Rowena's House of Splendors already. So I can gain white scripts at the end of my ocean fishing trips. This way I can later down the line use the white scripts to get rewards. And I will show you that later on. So that, that quest was here in the foundation. Just grab it and go to Mordona. Alright, now it's unlocked. Now we can gain white scripts from the ocean fishing trips. And later we can also gain scripts for crafting when it's 50 plus. By doing collectibles. Alright, so once you are level 41, you can update your gear. I recommend the level 39 linen set for crafters and gatherers. So... Let's do that one. We, you can also do this vintage coat. You can get this moth eaten coat tea here from this vendor in Upper Lanosia. Purchase scavenge gear and you can buy it here. Not super important, but just a little something to know. You can either do that. That one is actually expensive. It costed 1000 gil. But uh, if you have the, these materials, it's better. The other materials are easy. Otherwise, just do the normal linen coat of crafting. But I'm just gonna do this just for the sake of it. And let's go through the new abilities. Alright. That we got. Uh, first, let's get that out of the way. We get one away from finishing the craft. So pop, waste not. Oh, if you get an excellent, it's a good opportunity to gain some massive quality. So just do a standard touch. Yeah. Now let's work on the progress bar. Okay. Let's repop Waste Not. We got good condition. Let's do tricks of the trade to get CP back. Alright. So let me explain final appraisal. So final appraisal makes it so you don't finish the craft. It leaves one off. Like for example, right now if I do basic synthesis, it will get me 30 and it would finish the craft. But we're not done with the quality yet. So it have a chance to not high quality. But if we do final appraisal and then do basic synthesis, it won't finish the craft. It's basically a safety in case you don't want to finish the craft early. Or if you're following one of my macros, this is the best example. People make this mistake. They follow my macros, but their their craftsmanship is higher than me. They end up finishing the craft before actually doing letting the macro do anything with quality. So a final appraisal is a very good way to prevent that. Basically, what you do is put final appraisal before the last synth synthesis or the second last synthesis ability in the macro. This way. You can copy my macro, and even if you have craftsmanship high, you won't finish the craft and the macro works. So it's a, just a safety thing there. And popping it won't count as a step either, so you will not be wasting your buffs. And then we have innovation. Basically increasing quality for each step. Increases the eff 
efficiency of touch abilities. So increases the basic touch, standard touch, advanced touch, precise touch, all the touches. Increases the efficiency of it. So when you're building inner quiet stacks, it's a good idea to have innovation on so you gain more quality basically. If you have the CP for it. And what is inner quiet is a trait. The more touches you do, the more your control increases. So the next touch is even better for each touch you do. It goes up to 10 stacks. So you want to use like light touch abilities until your inner quiet stacks build. And then do your powerful one when it reaches 10. And obviously you can combo it with great strides and innovation and everything for even better effect. Alright, so we used the level 20 recipe to get to level 41. And now we're level 41. We will use the level 40 Ishgar recipe, which, which I just made the macro for that. We're gonna go through it. The tools are from the level 40 and uh, 35 class quests so do your class quests up to level 40 and you'll get the tools already shown how to craft the linen set you don't need the vintage coty you can use the normal linen linen coty of crafting so that works as well no problem accessories are mithril and uh, wolf earrings Link for the macro in the description and as as the one before there will be a link for the gear as well. So that's the gear. Here are our stats. 193 craftsmanship. 202 control. Your craftsmanship might be 192 if you're using the linen. It's only one craftsmanship difference so it's not gonna be any imp imp It's negligible. Okay, here's the macro. Level 40. You do this from 41 to 61 this same macro until 61 here it is oh yeah we also need almost forgot we also need to eat food that will get us to 320 cp i'm using seafoods 2 hq there is a lot of options you can use matcha hq or any other food that gets you to 320 cp there is a lot of options and uh, you can even Worst case scenario, you can just buy food from the vendor in uh, the culinarian vendor in Kugane. That's the worst case scenario. Otherwise, these are always cheap on the market board. Seafood stew and matcha. Bull blood bulla base is also cheap. So you have a lot of options. Alright, here's the macro. We won't need to update gear until 61 when we move to the 60 macro. So you just repeat this macro until level 61. Obviously we don't do 100% of the quality bar. But, it's basically enough anyway, to hand it in and uh, level up like crazy. Look at this. That's one level. Another level. <laughs> oh my god, that was another level almost. <laughs> this is stupid easy. How is this so easy to level up? I don't get it. Why why did they think it's a good idea to make crafting so easy? Oh well. I guess some of you won't complain. You wanna level fast. Alright. So that's it. Just repeat this until 61 and then we will make a macro for the 61 and then get gear as well. 61 gear. Once you reach level 60 with any crafter, you can come to Mordona. For this quest, go west, craftsman. This will allow us to 
unlock custom delivery. Once that is done, you can immediately accept the quest for unlocking Zloe Aleppo, which is our first custom delivery. Custom deliveries are weekly crafter and gatherer handings. It gives tons of scripts and experience, but it's limited. You can do 12 handings per week, 6 handings per NPC. Zloe is basically the first NPC we unlock. We need to be level 60 crafter so we can do Go West Craftsman quest. But the handings themselves, you can do it at level 55. Custom deliveries unlocked. Make a deli six remaining this week. It resets on Tuesday with a regular weekly reset. Okay. We need to hand in Near Eastern Antique. And uh, you see those hearts? That means that they are rank 1. As you do 3 deli deliveries, you will gain a rank. Each 3 deliveries will be a rank until max rank. You can do it for crafters, miner and botanist, or fisher. It depends. And once they reach max rank, they sometimes get a bonus. And it gives you way more XP and scripts when they have a bonus. Most of my gear is still the set that I used to do the level 40 Ishgard macro that I showed you. But I've done class quests up to level 55. And I've gotten this main hand and this off hand from the class quests. And the chess piece. So the rest are the linen. Okay, let's use food as well. And now we can craft. I will also tell you about these two new abilities we've got. Waste Not 2 is basically just Waste Not with more steps and less CP cost for more steps basically. It depends on the situation. Sometimes it's better to just use Waste Not. Muscle memory basically you increase a lot of progress at the beginning of the craft. You can only use this ability as the first step of each craft. If you do something else then you can't use muscle memory anymore. And it will give you a buff for 5 steps that buffs other progress abilities like rapid synth, basic synth, all the synthesis abilities. Careful synthesis which we don't have yet. So it's a good one. Muscle memory is very good. It's actually used for a lot of end game rotations and macros. Precise touch, you get two inner quiet stacks instead of one. But you can only use it when good or excellent condition is available. Very good ability. I love it. It makes Inner Quiet come faster and therefore Byragot's Blessing will be used sooner. So Byragot's Blessing, the more Inner Quiet stacks you have, the better it will be. Up to 300% of efficiency. And you can v boost it further with Innovation and Great Strides. It's insane amount of quality. Okay, I'm using Seafood Stew, so let's do a craft. Here are my stats. 446 craftsmanship, 340 control, nothing crazy. Near Eastern Antique, we start with muscle memory, it will give us 204 progress. And the next basic synthesis is also boosted. 163, okay let's use one. Okay, and the next one is 81. It won't finish the craft. Let's use a precise touch since we got good condition. Okay, that will be 440 something, another basic synthesis. Now we're one away from finishing it. Let's restore durability with Master's Mend. Another precise touch, nice. Let's use a waste knot one and then another precise touch. Wow, nice. That's already six stacks. Byrego's bless blessing will be huge. Okay, let's use an innovation to boost quality even more with touch abilities. We do one basic touch. 
Standard touch. Grace strides to boost it even more by the God's blessing. What's that quality gain? 1,251. That's like more than half of the actual maximum quality of the recipe itself. It's insane. And finish. So yeah, make sure you do your class quests. They are important. They give huge XP and they help a lot in keeping you up to date with gear as well. So you can do this kind of stuff. Okay, so we crafted all six hand ins. Let's hand them in. Now we're gonna get a lot of experience from these. Look at that. Obviously, this is only six for Zloe each week, but it's still good. And we get white scripts that we can use to buy other rewards, which I'll show. See why seafood stew is cheap? We just got one from this. Now she ranked up, and now we can hand in the other three. Course and souvenir. Nice. You can see your custom deliveries under timers. Now you see allowances six. I just did six, I have six left. So I can unlock another NPC and do another six for this week. Here we are in Ralgar's Reach. Make sure you do this quest called... Well, it's not a quest. You just talk to her and it will be unlocked. What you unlock is the script exchange here, which will unlock gear, crafter script gear that you can buy for level 70 for example. And the one in Idleshire was for level 60. The difference is for the level 60 sets you have to buy a set for each crafter class, however the the glamour is nice. It's it's the glamour I use for most of the crafter classes for my main character. So, even if you're not getting these for the stats, I highly recommend spending some white scripts later on when they become easier to farm to get this gear. Cause this is my favorite crafter glams, and you can dye them too. Yeah, you can get gatherer set as well. Item level 70 and 60. You can also get item level 58. And here is the quest for our next custom delivery, which is Nago. You must have finished Stormblood main scenario. At least 4.0. And you can unlock. Nago as well. There we go. Same thing. Works the same way. Materials are here. Same. It is level 60 recipe, so it might be a little bit harder, but not by much, really. Same rotation. Muscle memory. Waste not. If you, if you get a good condition or excellent, you pop precise touch. And it's the same thing. Basic synthesis, we got a good, so precise touch. Basic synthesis, until we are one basic synthesis away. Now, yes, we are one away. Another precise touch. Restore the durability. Innovation, basic, standard. We can do one more basic. Oh, we got an excellent. Let's pop by the ghost right away because it's time four times the quality. 2,521. That's even higher than the full quality bar itself. Oh, and we also got careful synthesis. May as well explain it. Basically, it's a 
it's basic synthesis, not, not different, except that it's more powerful, but it costs 7 CP. So, yes, sir. Alrighty, let's unlock Specialist. Beloved of the Builder. Quest is in Mordona. So basically, we get to have three Crafter classes as Specialist. And we can change it three times a week by buying this item called Soul of the Crafter with white scripts. Once you pick a class, a specialist, equip the soul of the of that craft. And uh, the soul will give us 20 more craftsmanship, 20 control, and 15 CP. So it helps with stats. We also get two abilities. Car careful observation at level 55. But you need to have something that is called the uh, crafter's delineation in order to use this ability. It basically gives you a chance to change the condition. So it's a way to try to get good or excellent condition without wasting any CP or durability or anything. And you can use it three times per craft. So it's a really good ability when manual crafting, it won't work for macros. Heart and Soul gives you a guaranteed precise touch. Or um, tricks of the trade, basically actions that require good or excellent. It lets you do it without having good or excellent for one turn. So really good abilities when manual crafting. They come mostly into play when we do expert recipes at end game. So I'm not gonna be really using them a lot in this guide. But when I do my expert recipe guides in the future, if they add new expert recipes, I'm gonna be using these two a lot. So if you go to the script exchange, crafter script miscellaneous tab, you can find the uh, soul of the crafter there. It costs 480 white scripts. But you can only change specialists three times. Uh, basically, you just hand soul of the crafter into that NPC for the specialist quest that we were just at. And you just replace one class for another to get the soul off. You can do that three times a week. But specialist is not really that relevant that you need to do it anyway. So I'm not even gonna use specialist for this guide. You know, but I just wanted to mention it just so it's there. It's something that exists, but it's not important. Okay, it is time to unlock master recipes books for crafters. So what master recipe books are, you use them and you unlock master recipes for each crafter. There are nine currently as of right now, patch 6.05. There will be a 10th one in patch 6.2. This is the quest to unlock it. Right here in Mordona. You need to have done at least level 50 class quests for the craft you are doing the quest as. So be sure to have done class quests. Okay, and then you talk to all Talon, Master Crafting Tomes. You can unlock Master Recipe 1 and 2 from all Talon. But the other ones you have to buy it with white scripts. Okay, so let's unlock Master Recipes 1. You do this for every crafter class when it comes to Master Recipes 1 and 2. You unlock the first one. Let's use it. And there will be a new tab. Master Recipes, Master Recipe 1. Rose Gold Cog, we need to craft this. And then Calibrated Cog. Make sure it's HQ. 
Oh man, these recipes back in the day were so hard to do. When they first came out. That was a long, long time ago. Back in 2013. 100% finish it. Once you do that, then hand it in for Maso Recipes 2. And just repeat the same thing for every class. There is also other Master Recipe books that you can buy. Demi Ma it's called Demi Materia Master Recipes. It, these are very easy, just buy the Fieldcraft Demi Materia 1 and 2. Uh, well, Demi Materia 1 for each battle and fieldcraft. When it comes to the other master recipe books, it's under the white script tab in the script exchange. Ga Crafter script master recipes slash material slash miscellany and then master recipes. You can see all of them here from 3 up to 9. However, we need to have talked to each NPC of each expansion. For Master Recipe 3 and 4, we need to have talked to the NPC in uh, Edelshire. For 5 and 6, we need to have talked to the one in Ralger's Reach. Which we already done when we d unlocked Custom Delivery, Slowy and Nago. And then for 7 and 8, it's Eulmor. Moen and Ilmor. Yeah, just make sure you talk to Moen so you unlock every. Actually, for the master recipes, we didn't need to, but you need to unlock her anyway. Otherwise, we can't get the books for gatherers. Almost level 53, then I can move on to collectibles. It's much faster way and better way to level up. So, <laughs> just make sure you have something to watch while spending few hours gathering in the diadem until level 53 yeah I've been doing this from level 1 until level 53 basically same thing because the experience scales no matter what level you are gathering in the diadem is always the same XP you get you get it scaled depending on your level okay so now we're level 53 need botanist level 53 then I'll craft gear then I'll show you the next step oh wow this is crazy by the way so I'm doing the level 53 botanist quest and it gives more XP than you need to get to level 54 so I guess we're going to the next step technically at level 54 I was planning to go level 53 but we're gonna end up being 54 because the class quests give so much XP and you need to do them anyway because of the traits, just like Crafter. These traits are super, super important. Be for example, Three Whisperers. You get char characteristics on the nodes like Gathering Attempts plus one, Gathering Yield plus one, and so on. Okay, so we got to level 54, do did the class quest, and... Uh, we got the offhand Mithrite Scythe from the class quest, so we're good on offhand for both Miner and Botanist. Now we need to upgrade the rest of the gear. I chose to get Chest and Gloss from the Botanist and Miner class quests. We can buy the rest here. From this NPC right here in Ishgard, the Armorer, and then pick Disciple of the Land and Hand Gear. Level 50 to 60. And then we're gonna buy the Weaven skin. Well, level 53 gatherer headpiece. Whichever one it is. Well, it's Holy Rainbow hat. It's 7k gil. It's, it's much cheaper to buy it than buy the materials and craft it, by the way. At least for this server. You can also check the market board if you want. And you can craft it yourself if you want. If it's cheaper than 7.9k. But in my server, at least this alt that I'm playing on, th in the server it's way more expensive if you craft it. 
So I just buy it from the NPC. Let's also buy the main hands for botanist and miner. Shop right here. Fieldcraft supplier. Same area, just different supplier. Disciple of the land tools. 50 to 60. Let's grab Mithrite pickaxe and uh, Mithrite hatchet. Okay, that's good. Alright, so here is our next step in leveling up. If you got your gathering log, then if you go to the special tab, there will be collectibles. Just like crafting, there is collectibles for gathering and you get white gatherer scripts just like ocean fishing that I've showed. And you can spend them to get rewards gear and unlock the crafting legendary notes. Legendary notes are like unspoiled notes. Unspoiled notes are basically notes that only spawn at the specific time of the day, Eorzean time. If you go to rarefied dark chestnut log, you can see it's from 10 to 12 and then from 22 to 0. Basically 10 to 12 a.m. and 10 to 12 p.m. Basically each unspoiled and legendary note have two hour windows. Realm Reborn ones have three hour windows but they only spawn once a day. But Heaven's Ward and upwards through the expansions they have two hours of spawn time and they spawn twice a day. And to see your Eorzean time you have it on I have it on my upper right corner. You can also go to character configuration, uh, UI settings, HUD, and you can view it here. You see Eorzea time, local time, server time. Just make sure you have Eorzean time picked. For this specific node, it spawns 10 to 12. It's right now 10 to 12 a.m. So it's, the, it's in the correct window of spawning. But to see the node, we need to pop Truth of the Forests. You see, as, as soon as I popped it, it appeared on the minimap. The node is that direction. Same thing for Miner. Miner got Truth of the Mountains. Botanist is Truth of the Forest. Let's pop it again. And let's go for the node. Legendary nodes we haven't unlocked yet, but I'll show you that as well. So here is the node. This is for collectible. Let's open it up. Rarify dark chestnut log. We want this. We have four abilities. Scrutiny. Scrutiny makes your collectible actions gain more collectability. We want to get to that 1000 max collectability on each so we get the maximum amount of white scripts and exp so if we pop scrutiny right now scour gives 183 collectability if we if we do nothing just do scour but if we do scrutiny it increases scour so let's do scrutiny and you see scour increase to 382 let me make it bigger as well Brazen is random. You get from 290 to 473. It is, it's dependent on RNG. And the, uh, the amount of collectability that scrutiny increases dependent, is dependent on your perception stat. So eating food that increases perception or upgrading your gear with higher perception will help with that. So I usually do the random one, brazen, and then met meticulous is also very good. It gives less collectability, but it's got a chance to not reduce your gathering attempts. Also known as integrity. Integrity is the same thing as gathering attempt, basically. Meticulous have a chance to not reduce your gathering attempt. Right now we are not as highly geared and this gear is temporarily so let's not to get too crazy yet as long as we get to 
enough collectability to hand in the item and gain XP, we will be fine. Just like the crafting Ishgard hand ins. We just get to the minimum and that's enough for now. It only matters really to get to 1000 at end game really. So don't worry about it too much. Okay, so I have scrutiny on. Let's do a brazen. That increased it to 459. Let's do another scrutiny with our gear right now, which I'll show in a bit. We have enough GP to do two scrutinies. So the next one I want to do meticulous because I will have a chance to save a gathering attempt. Therefore, I'll get one extra item. So let's pop that. Okay, nice. I have 795. I don't wanna waste more gathering attempts trying to get to 1000. I think this is more than enough to hand it in and gain massive amount of XP for now. It is recommended to get to 1000, but I will show you proper rotations later to get one th to 1000. For now, I don't wanna go too crazy on gear because leveling from 54 to 60 it's gonna be really quick and then we can get better gear then. Alright, let's collect. And if your gathering rate is not 100%, you can still use Field Mastery to increase it to 100%. But with this gear, I already have 100%, so I don't need to worry about that. So let's just collect the rest. Okay, so here is the gear. We got the main hand from the NPC vendor, or you can craft it. Same for the whole left side. Level 53 left side. Accessories I have not touched since the beginning when I got the Toad skin for some extra GP. You don't even need this by the way. You don't need any accessories at all. Because this rotation I just showed you only needs 400 GP, which is the base GP without any accessories. So don't worry about accessories. All you need... It's the offhand from the level 53 class quest. The gear we bought from the NPC that I showed. That's all you need. So go to any collectible appraiser. You can find them in many places. Like the main cities in Mordona, Edelshire, Ralgar's Reach, Ulmore and so on. And then here we can hand it in. So you see the collectability. If you have 600 to 799, that's all you need to be able to hand it in so as long as you get to minimum 600 you'll be fine it's the same thing for custom deliveries if you're doing gatherer version of custom deliveries like Zloe or Nago same thing just minimum 600 is enough it is recommended to get to 1000 for collectibles but it's not highly important just yet Okay, look at the XP bar. So we gained more than half of a XP bar, half of a level, just handing in four of these. So on the topic of uh, unspoiled notes that they only spawn at specific windows, each expansion have legendary notes, which are unspoiled notes, but you have to unlock them. And for example, Heaven's Ward 1, you come to the Splendors vendor in Idleshire and Fieldcraft items. Heaven's Ward have three books for Miner, three for Botanist, three for Fisher. That unlock legendary notes. And to get these books, they require Blue Gatherer script token. Which you can get from the script exchange using White Gatherer scripts. This is why I recommend leveling with collectibles. This way you can work on unlocking these books at the same time. If you go to this tab, level 60 material slash bait slash tokens. You see the word tokens. That's those tokens that we have to buy to get the legendary notes. Let's buy five. Just so I can show you one example. Fieldcraft items. Let's unlock... Coerthas minor notes, legendary notes. Just like the master recipe books for crafter, but these are for gatherer basically. And then if we go to our gathering log, 
Original folklore. We have unlocked in Coerta, so wait, we got, have to go to the minor tab for that. Okay. Original folklore, Coerthas, you see, there's a new node, new item to be gathered. This won't tell you when they spawn or at what time they spawn. However, it's also level 60, we can't gather it yet, but don't pay attention to that. You can use garland tools to find when they spawn. So just go to garland tools bell and type the item name and it will tell you when they spawn. Which I'll link in the video description. For Stormblood legendary notes, Splendor Vendor in Ralgar's Reach have them. They cost original folklore trader token A, type A, which you can also buy just like the other one from the Gatherer Exchange, Script Exchange. You go to level 70 instead of 60. And there it is. Splendor's Vendor for Shadowbringers in Ilmore, right here. It's Trader Token Type B. And then for Endwalker, it's Type C. Once you reach Ratsatan, you know when you're with Estinian in the story, Make sure to talk to this person so that you unlock the script exchange, purple scripts as well. This way when you gain purple scripts at level 90, you can spend it. Otherwise, this tab for purple script will not be shown. For example, if you go to crafter script materia and then script exchange materia, purple script exchange. You know, it's basically to unlock the purple script exchange. This way when you gain it, you can spend it. Otherwise, if you cap at 2k and you haven't reached this point of the story, you cannot spend it and you will be wasting it. Same thing with the Splendor's Vendor, you can... Yeah, Splendor's Vendor is here for Endwalker to unlock the legendary Folklore Norths. So yeah, they, these are all crafter NPCs right here. Just don't forget that. You can also put alarm for these notes. So the game itself will remind you when they pop. So for example, I want the next spawn of this to be alarmed. You right click on it or press square on PlayStation. Set timer for next occurrence. You can choose to do it for you daily. And at AM and PM. Next time it will be AM, so let's do that. One minute before it spawns, I want it to ring the bell for me. Confirm. Just keep in mind though, this alarm will reset if you log out. To see your alarms, you go to Actions and Traits, Extras, and then Alarm. You can see your current alarms there, or you can add a new one. Although I recommend mainly leveling up from collectibles, do feel free to do Leave Quest for Gatherer. It does give a ton of experience, so it is a good way to level up actually. Mainly these type of leaves that it's called evaluation leaves that gives evaluation bonus. Those give the most XP, these types, and you can see the card on the top right. So any leaf with this type of card is really good. Basically you just get uh, 320 points for 25% bonus XP when you finish the leaf. And to get to that 320, focus on getting the higher level node for this one here. It's only 74% chance. So be sure to grab Cordial so you can restore your GP and hit 100% of it. This way you get more XP out of it. Uh, this card right here is also evaluation type. 
the girl holding the flower basket. Instead, the difference is that you only have four notes to work with instead of eight. And you have to get 160 points to get the 25%. That's the only difference. So as long as you see these two type of leaves with these two cards, focus on them. It's a lot of XP, yeah, as you can see. But the problem is you don't gain scripts and that's why I don't like it and don't recommend it as, as much. But if you're in a really hurry, you can do a couple of leaves in between waiting for your legendary notes. Collectible notes. <laughs> I just finished the level 60 minor quest and... Well, I did the botanist too and... The XP is in really insanely huge. Look at that. And there is another level 60 quest straight away after from the miner quest. From the miner's guild. This one is even more. Look at that. 1.33. 1 million. Over 1 million XP. Basically almost a full XP bar. From 60 to 61. So doing both level 60 class quests will ensure you to get to 61. So be sure to do your class quests. Alright, level 62 for Miner and Botanist. We are using the High Steel main hand and the Gagana skin left side. Blood Hempen for the pants. You can either craft them the materials are actually cheap. If for some reason the materials are more expensive than the gear costs, you can buy it from the NPC here in Kugane. The Armorer, Fieldcraft gear, and you can find all of the Gagana skin, etc. And tool supplier for the tools. If you can't or don't want to craft the main hand, you can buy it here. Now the off hands are level 63, so we can't use them yet. You can either craft it or wait until you get to 63. You can, I think, get it from the class quest anyway, so you don't need to craft it. Alternatively, of course, you can just get some gear with white scripts. Under the tab, gatherer script gear. Level 60, item level 200. And you can get gear here as well, with white scripts. The only different thing is that you have to get one gear for Miner, one for Botanist. I mean, for the Glamour alone, you might be interested anyway. But yeah, there is that option. Accessories, I'm not upgrading just yet. I'm only using the 400 GP rotation for now to get my collectibles. So I don't really need... To spend the extra white scripts for accessories just yet. Although it is very cheap. I would not be against it if you want to grab them. But for now I don't need it. Alright same rotation collectible. Uh, just hang in there for this one. Because until we get to level 63 and do the class quest. Then we can get the offhand. Because right now our offhand is level 53 only. So we don't have the best stats. But once you do the level 63 class quest, this will be 100%. As I showed alternatively, you can get the white script offhand anyway if you want to get 100% straight away. But I don't mind just... I just need enough, like, maybe four of these to get to 63 and I'm good. But same rotation. Scrutiny. Brazen. Scrutiny. Another... Do another brazen because we are on the law side of things. Let's do another brazen. Okay, 600. As, lo as long as you get to 600, that's enough. And then we do sharp vision to increase it to 84%. We might miss here, but it's okay. 
It's only temporarily until we get to 63 anyway. Of course, you can always just keep going with the diadem. And you can also use the commercial survival manual that you got from the class quests. That will increase XP by a whole lot. And we can do the level 61. You see the XP is still really good. And with the commercial survival manual, we get so much XP as you can see. So you have a lot of ways to level up. So you just pick whatever you like the most. Personally, I majority of mine will be collectibles. I'm only doing a bit of diadem just to show you. Otherwise, myself, I will just do collectibles. So I can get white scripts. So basically, I kill two birds with one stone, I do my collectibles, I get white scripts in the process, and I get experience. The white scripts I can spend on gear, unlock the folklore legendary nodes, and later on grab material with it. You can also continue doing the old collectibles as well. This way you will have more windows of gatherer nodes to get. So I can do level 61, 59 and 55. These are three different nodes. And this way I will broaden my horizon in which collectibles I can do. Alright, level 61 crafter. Here is what I did for gear. I'm using the main tool from class quest and then I crafted NQ level 61 left side set. You can either craft this or you can buy it from the armorer in Kogane right here. Trade craft gear and you can find all of them there. As for the accessories, script exchange, crafter gear. Level 60. And there, there they are. Alternatively, if you don't want to craft a level 61 gear left side that I've done, or you don't want to spend gear, you can also grab level 60 sets for each class. Now, you can't use the same set for every crafter class. That's the thing. However, they are really nice glamour wise though. As I mentioned before. Alrighty, here is the level 60 Ishgard macro. You don't need to use food with the gear that I showed. Tools from class quest and I just showed you where to get these. So you don't need food for the macro, but using control food, food that increases control, will really help you get more collectability. Execute. And having more collectability, of course, means if you meet the threshold for higher XP rewards when handing them in. But it's not a big deal. We're not going to be using this a lot. It's going to be quick to get from 61 to 70. There you go, 83k XP just from crafting it by the way, because I've been using the engineering manuals, revised or commercial engineering manuals that you get from class quests and whatnot. Alright, just hit level 70 miner, let's grab some gear. Gear gatherer, gear exchange, level 70, item level 350, here. Grab the main hand for both miner and botanist. Fisher too if you want. I already grabbed this when I was doing ocean fishing. And I was getting a lot of white scripts. So I already have 
grab the left side and accessories. For the offhand, you will have to go to the 330 tab, right here, the sledgehammer and the sky. Full level 70 set, white script set is what I'm gonna be using until level 80. And then at level 80, we're gonna grab 80 gear. Item level 500. Offhand is also 500 in this case as well. So you just grab this full set right here. Once you have the white scripts and there you go. So basically at this point, we're just gonna keep repeating the same thing. Just go through your collectible tab until level 80. By the way, there is a cap on how much collectability you gain with each of the abilities as well. If you see it at 150, that means you are at the cap. That means no matter how much more perception you increase, you will not increase this beyond that 150. And with if we use scrutiny, it becomes 400. And I have a specific rotation for this when it's capped. Here is the rotation. You do scrutiny and then uh, meticulous. This rotation always guarantees 1000 as long as you have the cap, the perception cap to meet the cap with scrutiny or without. Another second scrutiny and then meticulous again. So we do scrutiny meticulous, scrutiny meticulous. And the next step depends on how much collectability you are at. If you are at 800, then Scour will get it to 1000. Because Scour increases it by 200. But since we did a critical hit on our second Meticulous, we landed at 900. Which means we can use the Meticulous and have a chance to have integrity not reduced. So this is an amazing rotation that always gets you 1000. As long as you have 400 GP, look at that. And integrity not reduced, nice. And uh, you can also do this ability called Angela's Words on Botanist and on Miner it's called Solid Reason to increase one more integrity for one more item. So you get one extra item at 1000 collectability. Look at that. So we're getting so many items at 1000 collectability right now. And that's gonna be so much experience. Since we have relevant gear, we have full level 70 white script gear. And we're doing a level 69 node. That means we're easily reaching the cap for scrutiny and for meticulous. Look at this. This is what we just gathered. Look at the XP bar. So easy now to level up. For So from 70 to 80, it's going to be super easy, actually. It's going to be super quick. Way more quicker than when we went to 50 and when we went to 60. So it's going to be a short ride to level 90 from here on. From level 70 to 80, you can also do the Crystarium deliveries. Basically, they are hand-ins for crafter and gatherer classes uh, that also have story related to it. So it's kind of the replacement for class quests. In Shadowbringers, they were implemented. Instead of crafter class quest, we have these Crystarium deliveries instead. They're really simple to do and they reward you a lot of XP and scripts. But it's a only one-time thing. It's not repeatable hand in, so. I do recommend at least doing the gatherer part of it. The crafter one is kinda annoying because you have to get your own materials for the hand ins. They are very easy to HQ, however. The gatherer ones are super easy, really. You just get 18 of the materials they ask for, and that's it. And you get tons of XP and scripts. But crafter. I'll just let you decide for yourself. Alrighty, here is the level 70 macro. Now, you don't need any food here, but 
Using control food will help gaining more quality. It's not important though, don't worry about it. Let me show the macro, a link also in the video description as usual. Make sure to have done level 65 class quest so that you have manipulation. Really, really important ability. Manipulation basically makes it so you restore 5 durability for each skill that you use for eight steps. It's really powerful. Oh wow, that was 100%. Nice. All right, I've done a bunch, let's hand them in. Because I have high collectability, the XP is quite decent. Uh, as you can see. The gear is obviously, of course, as usual, under script exchange. Gear... Level 70, item level 350. Now for the offhand, it's 330, so you have to go to the 330 tab to get the offhand. There is no 350 offhand version, so don't forget that. And that's the gear for the macro. The full level 70 set, except the tool that is 330 instead of 350. Alright, it's time to unlock Ethereal Reduction. You can already do it at level 56 Gatherer. I chose to wait because I didn't need it yet. Basically, there are special collectibles that you get and you reduce them. You use ethereal reduction on them to get crystals and sands. However, you can't just use ethereal reduction on any gatherer collectible. It has to come from ephemeral notes. Both miner and botanist have ephemeral notes. They spawn in four hour for Eorzean hour windows and every expansion have their own ephemeral notes for both miner and botanist you can find all of them when they spawn etc in the garland tools which I'll link again in the timestamp of this but I'm gonna show you an example this one is for example spawning 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. for botanist in he this is a heaven's word ephemeral note Potmar Joram is the example I want to show and it's basically the same rotation to get to 1000 collectability if you get to 1000 you get more crystals clusters and sands so just the same rotation scrutiny meticulous oh we got a crit nice scrutiny meticulous oh we got another crit perfect I wanted to show an example where I get to 1000 in two attempts yeah it's really rare but if you crit twice with a meticulous you don't need the third ability you get to thousand straight straight away and you can just gather oh don't forget angela's words and i just want to mention it now at level 90 you will have a chance to proc wise to the world 50 percent chance which will give you another integrity gathering at them but for now I'm not level 90 so I don't have that chance but I'm still gonna use it to that to get that extra item a thousand collectability all right so go to actions and traits general ethereal reduction add it to your hotbar click on it and you can see all of the stuff that you can use ethereal reduction on so so let's reduce these that i just got oh nice we got duskborn duskborn are actually really good because they are used to craft grade 3 free company buffs so you can sell them well nice so you just click on them and you reduce them and sometimes you have a chance to get bonus 
It's rare, but when you do get bonus, you double your rewards base. At level 61 Fisher, you can unlock spear fishing here in Tamamizu, in the Ruby Sea. Talk to this guy here. Okay, before we start spear fishing, I want to mention this because most of the time when you go for spear fishing, it's to collect and do ethereal reduction on them to get sands or to get collectibles for white and purple scripts. What happens is that most of the time I forgot to put the collectible on because if you don't have the collectible glove buff on, you, you will not catch collectibles. So I have made the macro where every time you change to your fisher, then the collectible will get popped automatically. So the first line is just to make the macro icon the fisher class. So M icon, macro icon, fisher class job. And then gear set, second line is slash gear set, change, eight. In my case, the fisher gear set is number eight. So that number depends on yours, which gear set is your fisher. And then action collect, that's all. So this way you won't forget to pop collect on. Yeah, let's pop it on. Okay. So here is spear fishing. So you open a node. Oh yeah, just like miner and botanist, you have this ability where you have to pop it on to see the nodes. But it's automatic after a certain level when you get a trade for it at 61. So you open the node just like miner and botanist and you see bunch of fish right there are three sizes of fish and three different speeds there are small medium and large that's a large for example and uh, they also have different speeds to see which speed easier you look at their hitbox you see that hitbox they have some are small some are bigger Faster fish have bigger hitbox, so you can hit them easier. Slower fish have smaller hitbox. And depending on the size of the fish and the speed of the fish, we know wh exactly which fish that we want. So right now, what I want is the fish that is medium size and is also really fast. I didn't catch anything on purpose, uh, just so I can talk and explain it to you. So let's go to the next node, and you can pop this ability uh, called Shark Eye 1 and 2 to see where the next node is at if you can't see them on the ma mini map right away. So let's go for it. This is where I am, by the way, in Thavnir, right here. Okay, so I want the fish that is fast speed, because that's the one I want to collect and get to reduce, to get Moonlight Aether Sands. This way I can make gill and level up at the same time. If you're following this guide in the future, this might not be making gill anymore, but there is always something equivalent to that expansion or that patch. I will always make updated guides for which spare fishing spot is the best to make gill at. So, you know, subscribe and all that good stuff, you know. Hit, put the bell to get notifications on when I post content. A little shameless plug there. All right. So what I want to do is pop revised manual, revised survival manual. So I increase my experience gain while doing this. I'm going to be showing you two different ways. One of them is you're making gill at the same time as leveling, which is this one. And the next one is just basically collectibles to gain experience faster. So that's on. Pop food as well to help. There it is. If you pop nature's bounty, you will catch larger fish. And larger fish have higher collectability. And therefore, you will get more crystals and sands, basically. So now we know which size of fish that we want. We, we only go for those. This way we stay at the node longer. So we don't... 
because if you catch any random fish, I got one. Guild top knot, that's the fast one. <laughs> okay, so any of the medium fast that comes up, I'm gonna catch it. You just press your gig ability and you will catch them. Make sure you hit the hitbox though. You just have to time it. It just comes with practice. You will eventually know exactly which speed and hitbox and which size of fish that you want. So, that, there is another one. Got it, gotcha. Haha. <laughs> Alright, so now we can use ethereal reduction on them. How much XP did I get? 55k for each catch. Not bad. So let's put ethereal reduction on here. These two that I just caught. Let me reduce them. There it is. Moonlight Aether Sand. This is an amazing way right now to make gill and level at the same time. Because Moonlight Aether Sand is used for raiding food and potion at the moment. For the savage raiding and ultimate in, in a month from now. Another useful ability for spare fishing is veteran trade. Basically what that does after you catch one random fish, it will make that random fish not pop up again in the window. Which increases the chance for the fish that we want to appear. So I just catch this one and use veteran trade. This way I don't see that again. And this way now I have a increased chance to see the one that I want, which is the fast medium fish. Not always gonna work. Oh, there he is. Nice, it worked. Oh, but I forgot, I forgot nature's bounties. So after you veteran trade, the random fish also use nature's bounty, so you catch a large version. Otherwise you'll get a low collectability one and that's not gonna give a lot of crystals or sense. Okay, so that's uh, that was a slow way to level up with spear fishing, but it was a gill making way. If you just wanna level fast, you can do the white script version of spear fishing. The nodes are right here, level 85 in the Ruby Sea. The fish that we want is a fast moving medium fish. So let's see if we get one. Pop. Nature's Bounty, higher collectability means more white scripts and more XP. So pop Nature's Bounty. There it is, I think. Yeah, Othardian Ras. That's the fish. It's a very fast medium one. I just caught one. There you are. Another one. Nice. So yeah, there you go. That's a good way. Caught a bunch, let's hand them in. Pretty decent considering the fish are common. It's not really a rare fish. They appear really commonly. You can also do the studium and cristarium deliveries for Fisher. Studium deliveries are just like Crystarium deliveries, but for Endwalker in Old Charlian. You can unlock them as soon as you reach this point of the story. A capital idea. I already caught them. I have separate guides on how to catch these giant Aetherlaws and all of the rest of the deliveries, by the way. That's good, 900 white scripts and almost 4 million experience. It's pretty damn good. You can, of course, continue spare. F you can, you can, of course, continue ocean fishing as well if you want. All right, for botanist level 80 and miner level 80, I grabbed the. Full white script item level 500 set. 
it's under the level 80 white script gatherer exchange tab and now i'm doing studium deliveries on top of that you just keep continuing with your collectible tab and go through everything when they spawn what i also did was set alarm for them when i was doing the end walker main scenario quests I just set alarm for them and in between cutscenes I would just go grab a note and I was level 90 gatherers before I even finished the Endwalker story so it's really fast to level just like before when we were handing in collectibles. Now for the studium delivery it's not like the Crystarium we have to do collectibles but it's really easy we only need 600 collectability. To get the maximum XP and scripts. So same rotation. Scrutiny. Meticulous. Scrutiny. Meticulous. That's it. Oh that even critted. Okay. And it's for 95%. So we use field mastery to get it to 100%. And gather. We just need 6 per delivery. Now the level 81 collectibles won't have the 400 cap with scrutiny and the 150 cap without scrutiny it should be for meticulous but don't worry about it we can make up for it instead we will use a third scrutiny a third meticulous for the third meticulous so scrutiny meticulous Oh, that critted, nice. Scrutiny, meticulous. Oh, wow, another crit. Okay, I guess if you crit... Okay, if I had met the cap, it would have been 1000. But even the level 80 white script gear, it's still under the perception threshold. But because we critted, we don't need the third scrutiny anyway. Okay, nice. Field mastery to get it to 100%. Oh, because we didn't use the third scrutiny, we have the GP for I for Angela's words as well to get one more item. And collect. So it's even easier to do until level 90. Don't forget again that you can do your old collectibles, like the 71 to 80 collectibles. So you have more notes to work with. 50 to 70 can do as well, but don't go that crazy. These don't give as much XP anymore. Just focus on these two and just go through them when they spawn. Just do the same for minor and that's all until level 90. Handing in the studium delivery, the first one, for miner and botanist. Almost 4 million experience and 900 white scripts. Nice. Alright, hit level 80 crafter. From here on we do the collectibles. So what you do is just spam the level 81 collectible for every craft. And that's the best way to get to 90. Obviously you can do the other ones if you find the materials easier to get But I feel like the 81 is really easy to get the materials and it gives you a lot of experience So I'm gonna be doing this until level 90 basically and here is the macro for it If you do want ma macros for the entire leveling like from 81 to 90 if you want to change the recipe i already have provided macros for these when endwalker came out so just go to my website it's under the 6.0 macros from when leveling from 80 to 90 bunch of macros listed there so you can do those but i but here I'll just show the 81. So just keep repeating this until you get 81, then you can hand them in. 
And then once we get to 86 alchemists, there's another one I, I wanna show you. Yeah, the gear I'm using is, yeah, the level 80 white script set, the full set. Let's hand in those two I crafted. It gives 1 million XP. And the macro doesn't need food and it's, six, it's single button. And tons of white crafter scripts that you can use to unlock the master recipe book, so... It's really good. Once you hit level 83 alchemist, you can st already start crafting the commanding draught. This is one of the best ways to make gil. You craft a draught and you hand it into the leaf quest. And here's the macro that I use. So I recommend focusing on alchemist first to get to 80s. This way you can start making gil already. This method of making gil requires you to have leave allowances though. But it's a really good way. It's guaranteed gil and you don't have to deal with the market board. You can make... 1 million gil every 17 days using this. Pretty good steady income for not so much work. And later on when you get to level 90 you can single button macro it and shorter macro as well. So you can macro them even faster. This macro is under the 6.0 macros on my website, I'll also link it in the video description. Alright, you can already start doing this macro and making them at level 83. But you can't hand them in until you are 86, because the leave quest is level 86 itself. Here is the leave mat in Old Charlian. Let's unlock it by talking to him. And then we can hand it in now. What I do is like go in between here so I can hand them in fast. So I accept the leave practical command and just hand them in to the other NPC quickly like this. As for the materials for the craft itself, you can have retainers bring them back. I have a retainer guide, feel free to check that out. But in the beginning you may not have retainers leveled up, but I would say buying the materials initially might be good just to get you started. Besides, it's a great way to get 86 to 90 alchemists quick, very very quickly as well. And you're making gil at the same time, it's 10k per average per hand in. Sometimes it gets goes up to 11k handing in HQ, sometimes it goes down to 9.2k. So it's if we average it out it's like approximately 1 million per hand in. Well, 1 million per 100 hand ins. Your leave allowances cap at 100. You get 6 per day and that makes it every 17 days you get 100 and that's 1 million gil if you hand in all the potions basically i still think this is like one of the best ways to make gil and it's gonna stay the best way until next expansion when we move to the next leaves all right so once you get to level 86 you can start to craft your level 90 gatherer and crafter set already you need seafood stew or higher food there are a lot of options like matcha chili crab and so on basically just any food that gives you the stat requirements for the macro macro in the video description as always all right here is macro number one you can also use this macro for Farming white scripts with this white script level 80 gear or purple scripts even you actually don't need to 
get the level 90 set to craft some scripts. Just use this macro right here for the level 89 and level 90 collectibles that lets you farm scripts easily, both purple and white scripts. So if you're following this guide in the future where I lead you to getting some script gear as a stepping stone for the best gear, then you can use this macro for that as well. So if you're following this guide, for example, in next expansion, let's say, and want to do the collectible recipes, you can. There we go, 100%, easy peasy. Done. And you can craft a whole set, both crafter and gatherer like this, one by one. Looks really nice too. <laughs> Alright, so this guide is basically a foundation for future guides. For example, in 6.3 when the best crafter set comes out for uh, for Endwalker because after 6.3 we won't be getting any new gear and 6.3 gear will be the best gear I'm gonna make a continuation guide to show you how to get from fresh level 90 to that gear basically and this guide will be basically a foundation of that same thing in 6.1 once the left side and tools come out I'm gonna show how to get from fresh level 90 to that gear as well. And then, next expansion, level 90 to 100. Basically, beginner's guide, level 90 to 100. And that will be also a continuation of this guide. So, uh, yeah, this guide will be a good foundation for everything else that's gonna come out in the future. And I'll make a guide for it. I will link the other playlists of my other FF14 guides to help you make gear and everything in the video description as well, so be sure to check those out too. You will find a lot of guides that will help you for future patches as well. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please give it a like because that will help a lot for the YouTube algorithm. Really appreciate you a lot for that. And if you want to support the content further, you can do that on Patreon or Twitch. On Twitch, I live stream my gill making when new patches come out as well. And usually just hang out. And on Patreon, you can get these guides earlier, have early access to them. Really appreciate all the support and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye bye.